Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's June 10th, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, members of the UN peacekeeping mission in Haiti demand sex for food and medication. Meanwhile, secret cell phone towers in London are collecting private data. And look who's going to Bilderberg this year. Well, what do you know? It's General Petraeus. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Previously, we brought you stories about Stingray systems here in the state, cities such as Seattle. Now it seems like this thing is going worldwide, and now we have reports of these things popping up in places like London. There are secret cell towers in London that fool phones into giving up private call data. In a report published by Sky News, evidence has shown that fake cell towers are being used in London, which have the ability to eavesdrop on calls and collect additional communications data. And they go by the name Stingray. It's about the size of a briefcase and just as portable. And previously, these things have been called a conspiracy theory. These things didn't exist. Nobody was eavesdropping on your calls, even though Alex Jones was telling you about this stuff about 15 years ago. Now that's in the mainstream news, now that you can believe it, that they have the ability to eavesdrop on your calls in real time. And I'm not talking about, you know, you have a, a voicemail and somebody wants to go back and check it with a warrant for probable cause and things such as that nature. We know about that. I'm talking about people being able to monitor your calls in real time. And, you know, the justification is, well, we have to do this to catch this drug dealer, you know, in this uh, motel over here. Okay, I can kind of understand that, but they can't type into the system, identify drug dealer, only steal that data. No, they get the information from everybody who's in that motel, hotel, or Holiday Inn. And these are the things that we have to deal with, the uh, invasions of our privacy. Yeah, maybe there are, they are in there cooking meth, Walter White and and Jesse and all those guys, but they're also scooping up all the data of everybody else. So yes, you're committing a crime to go catch criminals who are committing crimes, so you really don't have much more higher ground than they do. And we'll move on from that to talk about some other things that people don't have exactly the highest ground on. The United Nations. Now, previously we had seen reports of things going on in Haiti, talking about how organizations like the Red Cross got about a half a billion dollars and built about six homes in, uh, in Haiti, and then they've set up some tents and we're teaching people how to wash hands, but everybody's like, well, where'd all the money go? Now we're talking about Haiti in a different light. The United Nations went down there, and they have their employees, workers, whatever you call them, engaging in sexual activity with the locals. UN, sex exploitation by peacekeepers strongly underreported. And this is a report that is due to be released sometime later this month. And it says, a year ago, the report says, investigators interviewed 231 people in Haiti who said that they had transactional sexual relations with UN peacekeepers for rural women, hunger, lack of shelter, baby care items, medication, and household items were frequently cited as the triggering needs, the report says. So basically, they were having sex for, I guess, not money, but other things. Even says uh, laptops and cell phones. I'm not sure how well that worked, but... Uh, these are the charges brought against these people. And, and we've seen the U UN involved in all types of stuff, cocaine shipments to the UN building and all that stuff. And they said, well, we don't know who ordered this cocaine. <laughs> Just all these wild allegations. And yeah, the UN does a lot of good stuff. They try to help a lot of people. But remember, it's also the UN who is putting vaccinations in the uh, arms of little Syrian children. That was the World Health Organization, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And many of those children died. And you won't hear about that here in the United States of America. They just want to say everything the U.N. does is great and good, but they don't want to talk about these incidents that go on. And once again, the U.N. does a lot of good stuff. There's plenty of stuff I don't agree with. The U.N. Uh, arms trade treaty, they're trying to take away your firearms. Like I said, the kids in Syria. So we can't turn a blind eye to these things. But they also need to be held accountable for these actions. And since we're talking about the U.N. and their disarmament agenda, Let's talk about somebody who was armed in the proper situation and who was able to use their firearm in the proper way. When they literally sprinted from the bushes up to him, closing that distance very rapidly while pointing the gun directly at him. He had a concealed weapons permit and a pistol in his pocket. Our female victim began to flee back towards the restaurant. And as she did that, the uh, suspect that had a firearm began to point that at her uh, in a method that made her um, significant other believe that 
He was possibly going to fire. The suspect that was shot was hit in the left shin. And those are the type of actions you will not be able to take if the UN or some of these other gun grabbers get their way. And since we're going to talk about many things going on all around the world, let's wrap it up talking about Bilderberg. Bilderberg, the huge conference that's going on right now overseas. Our guys are there, Paul Joseph Watson, Rob Dew, and of course our photographer, Josh Owens. They're on the scene. Now, this is something straight out of a movie. You know, you have uh, this huge mountain in a castle and Cobra commanders. I'm not making this stuff up. There are actual Cobra commanders on the ground. And now thus far, I don't think our guys have encountered them properly. There are other police agencies out there. They're harassing people. Let me see your ID. Let me see your passport. Every place they go, cops doing sneaking peeks into their hotel rooms, looking in their windows, showing up when they're not there. Then they go to confront the cops. Well, hell, I don't know anything about what you're talking about, Mr. Do. Just don't come in here and record in our police station. Just all types of bizarre things going on surrounding Bilderberg. And now we have convicted criminal David Petraeus to represent U.S. at Bilderberg. In April, former CIA director and retired General David Petraeus pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge of handling over classified information to his mistress and biographer. He was sentenced to two years probation and a $100,000 fine. And I like what Kurt Nimmo does in this article. He compares and contrasts Mr. Petraeus to Edward Snowden and Bradley Manning, who were, I guess, guilty of similar crimes. But as we all know, Manning is in jail and Edward Snowden is a worldwide wanted criminal. So just think about this. You know, you have somebody who's the head of an organization and is giving out information not to blow the whistle on wrong deeds or misdoing, but just to make his mistress happy. You have two guys who are out here trying to make their country better. And maybe you could, you know, you can nitpick. Maybe they should have did this. Maybe they should have did it like that. Regardless, they have the best of intentions trying to put a spotlight on the people who are doing wrongdoing in our country, and now they're the ones who are wanted and the ones who are in prison. Just food for thought as we go forward, and keep this in mind as we go forward in this Bilderberg conference. As you can see all these guys, Kissinger, all these other guys, Kissinger, who is a uh, wanted uh, war criminal in various places around the world, many other people as well. We've seen uh, Mrs. Clinton and other people involved in these type of conferences, Bill Clinton, all that as well. So stay tuned. We'll have much more about the Bilderberg Conference. We'll have a special report talking about the spirit of Jim Tucker, the pioneer of reporting on Bilderberg. Also, many other reports as well. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. Folks, I don't believe it, but I think that might be Jim Tucker, the ghost of Jim Tucker coming back to investigate the Bilderberg Group. He was the investigator that spent decades tracking the Bilderberg. He wrote the Bilderberg Diaries, and he never stopped up until the day he died. God rest his soul, rest in peace, Jim Tucker. You will not be forgotten. Your legacy still lives on. People, however, have spent their entire life fighting this. And one tireless person, I want you to hear a quote from Jim Tucker, who just passed away. He said, if a hundred of the world's best known sports figures or film stars were gathered at some exclusive resort behind closed doors for a private meeting, the entirety of the mass media would be on hand, clamoring for admittance, demanding to know what was going on. But when the world's richest bankers, media barons, industrialists, members of royalty, and political leaders were meeting secretly and discussing public policy matters that impacted on the course of the world's affairs, the establishment press never said a word. That's a quote from Jim Tucker who passed away. Now Jim spent most of his life following the Bilderberg uh, conference, something that for decades people would ridicule him and laugh at him. People would deny that it even existed, yet he followed this as an investigative journalist and he stayed on the trail 
as really kind of a uh, lone, you're talking about lone wolf terrorist, he was a lone wolf truth seeker. My name is Jim Tucker. We're at St. Marie, Switzerland for the uh, Bilderberg meeting. Well, this year, uh, Bilderberg is strongly committed to uh, expanding the war with the invasion of Egypt so they could uh, have a big war. They use the term big war a lot in the Middle, middle East because that will, that will generate profits. Uh, they want them all involved in a big war. Right. They, uh, they want a war throughout the Middle East uh, with the exception of Israel. It is uh, said there's big profits to be made from uh, war. Because when you go to war, you're making tanks, airplanes, uh, trucks, jeeps, and all kinds of war materials, which uh, is profitable in its own way. And then the war profiteering kicks in, as it has in all of our wars, uh, where other big bucks are made on top of the big bucks. I think more are feeling very hesitant, uh, very eager to cover their butts when they come to Bilderberg, like uh, Secretary of Defense not being on the list when the Secretary of Defense always attends Bilderberg from the United States, along with the Secretary of Treasury, who's here, and uh, Secretary of Commerce, other high officials in the administration. I'll tell you, I had the pleasure of uh, talking to Kenneth Clark one time when he was in Washington. Uh, he thought he was going to hold a press conference to discuss, I forgot, some international issue. I'm there and I asked the first question. I said, uh, Mr. Clark, you attended the Bilderberg meeting. I named, had notes in front of me, named the dates, the exact location, and the exact town and country on uh, these dates. Can you tell us uh, what transpired? The other reports from the New York Times, of course, never heard of Bilderberg, uh, but they're real interested in this. You know, Kenneth Clark's face goes uh, blank. He fumbles around a little bit. Then he started answering questions. I remember him saying, uh, yes, we should have a world government. Uh, we will have, uh, this goes back a few years, of course, when they were real optimistic. Uh, we will have uh, a, Europe, a complete European Union, uh, a common currency. There, then they will have the American Union, and your common currency will be the Mario. Then we'll have the Asian Pacific Union, and they'll have a common currency. And our grandchildren are going to laugh about the uh, uh, days we had all these petty little currencies. Right. We have to have a world government so you have peace and all that jazz. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. We are downtown in Telfs, Austria, here to ask the people what they think of the Bilderberg Group. Telfs is just at, basically at the mountain floor of a little winding road that goes up to the Inner Alpen Hotel, and that is where the 2015 Bilderberg meeting will be taking place. Of course, there is a massive police presence. There was a roadblock just outside of Telfs. They've now moved that up the mountain a little bit, but there are still thousands of cops, at least about 2,000, that are going to be here protecting the elites using taxpayer money to do it. But it's a private meeting, so we can't know what they're talking about, even though they're inviting media representatives there because their job is to keep everything quiet. What we're going to do here is find some people, hopefully, who speak English and ask them what they think of the Bilderberg Group. Hey, what's up, guys? Can I talk to you all for a second? Any of y'all speak English? A little bit. A little bit? All right, you're the one I want to talk to. How long have you lived here in Austria? Uh, since 17 years. Okay. Do you know what the Bilderberg Group is? No, I don't know. A what? The Bilderberg Group. No. Well, actually, I think it's it's sec it's a secret. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Bilderberg Group. They're from Bilderberg Denmark. In, in, yes. In, uh, hotel. Interalpen. Interalpen. Yes. 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 Uh, some uh, some people uh, who make the world go round. Huh? Yeah, that's good. That's a good yeah. answer. Do you know about the Bilderberg Group? Yeah, you yes, do. Good. Yes, yeah, good. You like it? I like good many nights. Do you know where the inner inner Alpen is? Yeah. Okay, that's where they're meeting. Yes. Do you know what they're going to be talking about? Survey. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you think it's a good thing? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Do you know about the Bilderberg Group? No. All right. Take care. You guys speak English? No. 
No, no English? All right. What do you think the Bilderberg Group is? What do you think it would be? Um, I think music. Um, music group or something like that. All right. It's a shame. I'm going to give you a little lesson. I want you to tell your buddies about the Bilderberg Group, okay? okay? It's a group of 150 of the most powerful people in Europe, the United States, and Canada in politics and technology and royalty that get together for a secret meeting. Okay, they have this meeting in secret. They make us, with our tax dollars, pay for all the security, but they don't want any press in there to talk about what they talk about. They say because it's a private meeting. Okay, now how do you feel about that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> do you think rich people should get together to determine the fate of just regular people in, in the world in secret? Yeah, they should. You think they should be able to? Yeah, they should. Okay. That's the wrong answer. I know, I think not so good if cause it's secret, so... Uh, secret is good. You, you, you think it's good that they meet in secret? Yes, it's good. Okay. We know that, that, uh, that the motherfuckers are there. And yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. It's, it's scandalous. Okay, so I found an American living in Telfs, Austria. What is your name? Mackenzie. Mackenzie, and where are you from? Seattle, Washington. Seattle. And your name? Vincent. Vincent. Are you from America? No, I'm from Austria. Austria. All right. So, have either of you heard of the Bilderberg Group? He has. <laughs> I do. You have? What do you think it is? Uh, I think it's total bullshit when I can say that. <laughs> yeah, it's the internet. Um, I think people deserve to know what's going on in our economy because economy is important to uh, build up our countries, our entire countries, how, like, Ameri I mean, it's, it's America now, not Austria, but in Austria mm -hmm. it's important that we know what our economy does so we can um, react to it and we know what we have to do for our future. See, the reason our world, see, the reason we have so many wars and there's, people say there's an uneven balance is because elites, as what we like to refer to them as, get together in secret to determine our destiny. Okay, we can't have an open discourse of ideas unless we know what they're talking about. Yeah. So if we know, hey, they want to plan a war in the Ukraine with Russia, yeah. we should know about that so we can say, hey, we don't think that's right, or maybe there's a different way we can work mm -hmm. this out. So right now, up in the Inner Alpen Hotel, okay. there's going to be 150 elites that get together starting on Thursday to have a secret meeting. All right. Really? Now I'm going to ask you once again: Do you think that's a good thing? No, that's not a good thing. <laughs> that's that's a really bad thing. It's a terrible thing. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys gone through a roadblock yet? Yes. Yes. Because we're going to say. Yeah. Okay. We've been to the lake three times now, yeah. last week, and um, every time we have to go to the security, right. which is. Does it make you feel warm and fuzzy? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> have you been through a checkpoint yet? Yeah. What do you think of that? Well, I think it's. It, it, it's it, I, we need. We need them. But they're making making you, everybody else, pay for it with their tax dollars for yeah, the security. Yeah. 2,000 cops. Have you gone through yeah, a roadblock yeah, yet? Friday at night, uh, the whole street, all over cops. Uh, uh, this is yeah. incredible. Does it make you feel safe? Uh, no. Bilderberg Group. Say it with me. Bilderberg Group. Say it louder. Bilderberg Group. Bilderberg Group. That's right. Okay. All right. You all look it up, read about it, and tell your friends about it. Okay. And say, why are we having a secret meeting here in Telfs that we can't even know about? Get on your Twitter, your Facebook, do it all up. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Is, isn't that crazy that they have this in this world? Yeah, yes. All right, I want you to say it with me. Down with the Bilderberg Group. <laughs> there you go. Vaccines are a hot topic that have been in the news quite a bit. As we talked about in our previous segment, vaccines injuring children over in Syria, vaccines injuring children down in Mexico. But nobody wants to talk about these issues, and now they're injuring children in California. In spite of massive opposition from the public, California's SB 277, removing personal exemptions for vaccines, has just cleared another important legislative hurdle. Don't let them call it exemptions. That's the language of an authoritarian government where everything is prohibited unless expressly permitted. Informed consent for medical treatment is a fundamental human right. That right used to be recognized by the AMA when it still had ethics. Informed consent is the linchpin to protect against abuses like the Tuskegee syphilis experiments. And the removal of informed consent and our human rights puts us all in much greater danger than we could ever be from any disease.
The federal government shields the drug industry and doctors from vaccine injury lawsuits and directs doctors to give children triple the numbers of vaccinations they got 30 years ago. Several hundred new vaccines are being created and this bill facilitates the mandating of new vaccines without your vote. No doctor in California or public health official at the CDC in Atlanta can accurately predict whether or not a child will suffer brain inflammation, injury, or death after vaccination. The $3 billion already paid out to vaccine casualties under the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act is confirmation of that fact. While we are all born equal under the law, we are not all born the same, and we do not all respond the same way to pharmaceutical products. As the Institute of Medicine has repeatedly stated in published reports, some of us are genetically and biologically more vulnerable to being harmed by vaccines, but doctors cannot accurately identify who we are because of large gaps in the vaccine safety science. The fact that science has not adequately defined who among us is at high risk for vaccine complications does not mean that our lives are less deserving of protection than those at high risk for the disease complications. Native California, I got my undergraduate degree from Harvard University. I'm an attorney and I practice education law. I'm here to testify today about the practical implications of attempting to implement SB 277, but I'd like to tell you a minute or two about my boy. He was our firstborn, uh, perfectly healthy at birth, hitting all of his, his milestones. Um, as first-time parents, we were very conscious about hitting all his uh, pediatrician visits and staying on schedule. At four months, we took him in for his scheduled dose of vaccines. Um, that evening, we took him home. He had a 104-degree uh, fever. He uh, screamed inconsolably for hours and vomited. He had never been sick before. Shortly thereafter, he started having seizures. We rushed him to the hospital where they started him on a, a, a drug called phenobarbital, which, which controlled the seizures. Um, his development resumed, and at our next pediatrician visit, which is around seven months old, my wife and I had, had prepared to confront our doctor and say, look, Clayton had this, uh, this reaction last time. He's developed epilepsy. You know, he's on medication. We'd like to wait till he's a little older before getting his next round of vaccines. Um, our pediatrician pushed back. She pressed us. Um, she said, she assured us there was no connection between his epilepsy and the seizures and the vaccines that he had received at four months. She went further and she said that because he was having health problems, he was at greater risk of being exposed and that we uh, could even, it, it, she suggested it be irresponsible for us not to, not to uh, stay on schedule with him. Against our uh, instincts, we went ahead and had him vaccinated on schedule. Um, Shortly after that, his seizures returned with a vengeance. Um, he sees so much that he entered into a medical state, which is called status, epile status epilepticus. It's when the brain uh, is in a state of continuous seizure. We rushed him to the hospital. That, that episode was the last time we heard our son's voice for three years. Um, he collapsed after 45 minutes of seizing. And um, when he finally uh, woke up, he had lost the ability to respond to sound. Like I said, he, he no longer used his voice. And over the next several months, we saw a dramatic mental regression in our son. It was after that that my wife and I did research and learned about uh, Congress in the late 1980s passing the, no, uh, the National Childhood Injury Vaccine Program and Act, which has been referred to. We learned that um, vaccines are not safe for all kids and that there's very little in terms of screening that can be done to determine which kids will have a reaction like Clayton's and which kids will have no reaction. Clayton's 13 years old today. Um, my wife and I wanted him to be here for this. Um, he seizes every day. Saturday night, he had 37 grand mal seizures, so he's currently in Children's Hospital in L.A., but he's here with me in spirit. I share the personal testimony because I, I need you to understand my, my family's belief about vaccines. Um, we finally decided to, to have a daughter, so Clayton has a 9-year-old sister. She's perfectly healthy. She's never been vaccinated because we live in fear that we've got some genetic predisposition that could give her a similar reaction. And if this bill passes, we'll be forced to homeschool our daughter. The bill passes 12 to 6. Thank you. Thank you. I, for one, will not comply with any law that presumes to take away my human rights. And I will not obey any government that tries to enforce that. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight.
And we'll end tonight with some Bilderberg news. As we told you earlier, our crew is on the ground right now forbidding castles, mountains, Cobra commandos. You can't make this stuff up. This is really going on over there at Bilderberg 2015. And as you're watching this on YouTube, it may be the next day. Maybe the conference has already started. So we have to be ready for this. You know, everybody's out there. They're ready with their cameras as close as they can be to the action. But very unfortunate is if you have a camera and you have a live signal, they have these jamming signals out there stopping your broadcast. We know we've seen these things all over the country, myself and Joe Biggs, when we travel the highways and byways, sometimes we encounter these stingray systems, but now they have systems over there in Bilderberg who are jamming people's signals. Rob Dew here reporting for InfoWars.com. We have some breaking news. Uh, first off, just over this way, and we're going to show you some shots of this, we have a sighting of the Hotel Interalp, and we were able to see the site, and it's uh, along the road going to the golf course. And uh, But that's not the big breaking news. The big breaking news is actually standing behind me, and what, what it looks like we have here is a, uh, a communications-type van, but not to enable communications, to disable communications. And here with more on that is Paul Joseph Watson, who just landed from Innsbruck today. Paul, how are you doing? Good, yeah, we were just talking to an informed local who told us a few other interesting things, but he directly said that this vehicle is basically designed to cut off communications for anybody in the nearby area trying to cover Bilderberg as media. So this could be a transmitter, we're not sure, but we were told directly that this van is being used to cut cell phone signals so people can't broadcast and cover this event. So it's not enough that they have checkpoints six miles around the perimeter. Now we can't even cover the event via, you know, standard cell phone coverage because they're directly interfering in people's communications. It's ridiculous. And I'll tell you this, Paul, the, uh, the Wi-Fi, we're supposed to have Wi-Fi at the place I'm staying at up on the mountain, and I haven't been able to get anything out of there. Only cell phone signals are the only thing that comes out. So I'm wondering if this has to do with that. There's also an antenna right over there. We'll, we'll shoot another long range shot of that so we can show you what that looks like. It looks like it was pretty recent put up, but that could also be part of this uh, triangulation grid that they're setting up to cut off communications. Yeah, there was speculation during the Bundy Ranch siege that this was happening, that they were cutting off communications. That was never confirmed. We were told directly by a very informed local who said that this is exactly what's happening. So if they have to go to this level to shut down independent media and mainstream press coverage of this event, again, it illustrates how paranoid they are about any information leaking out of Bilderberg 2015. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if after we put out this report that suddenly this area becomes off limits because right now we are free to travel in this area. Uh, you can actually see the barrier over here. You're not allowed to go over that way. And there's a barrier on the other side of the road over there. And those are basically if you step over that line or if you are caught on the other side of that line, it is a 500 euro fine or two weeks in jail, whichever you prefer. Yeah, and it's, it's obviously quite near the golf course, which is still open, that's outside the perimeter, but people could just wander into that security zone on a whim. You could get families out hiking on the weekend, not aware of what's going on with Bilderberg, and they could just wander in and be subject to a 500 euro fine. It's, again, it's insane. Or if you knock your golf ball over into the finery and that's your last one, you know, hey, I, I could get my golf ball, and boom, 500 euro fine. Anything could happen. And guess what? Bilderberg is starting tomorrow. The elites will start landing at Innsbruck. They will be taken here either by uh, car, they, some might come by helicopter. Who knows how they're going to be getting here? Uh, Henry Kissinger, I think, is coming by teleportation device. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put anything past him. But I mean, this is a big story that, you know, we've been told that this van is there to cut out communications. There's nobody in it at the moment. I'm sure there has been at some point. Um, so this is a major breaking story. Bilderberg yeah. directly interfering in communications to prevent coverage of their conference. Yeah, they're stifling all forms of communication. But what would you expect in the home of Adolf Hitler? I don't know. Uh, this is Rob Deere reporting for Infowars.com with Paul Joseph Watson. Here's a shot once again. If, if anybody out there knows what this is, please tell us in the comments of this video if, if we're wrong. But we've been told that this is a device, a communications device to cut off communication to the outside world, exactly what the elites want. They want to stay in shadows. They don't want to step out in the light and just say, hey, we're here to control you. We're here to control all your money. We want to get rid of cash so we can control everything about your life. They want to keep that hidden from you out there. And that's why we need to see people out there speaking up. We thank everybody for calling the police and letting them know that they cannot stifle journalists here. That really helped us out, so we really do appreciate it. Once again, this is Rob Deere reporting for InfoWars.com and Paul Joseph Watson. And that's it for our show tonight. But if you'd like to see more Bilderberg footage, 
you can go to our main page, go to the far right hand side and click the Bilderberg link. And that will take you to the watch page where you can see all the Bilderberg footage that the guys will be putting up.